So let's take a look at the Easy EV charge point. This is a new one on us again, so we've not installed any of these as yet. As you'll have seen on the channel, we are typically in the Hypervolt crew and the Zappies. But we're starting to branch out into a few more of these charge points now as um, customer requests are changing. So we're seeing a few of these popping up on our order inquiry forms. And this is an untethered charger. So they, I believe they all come untethered. And it will lock in the customer's supplied cable. But the guys will take you through with that out on the install so we can have a look at that but essentially this is what you get in the box so it's a pretty nice charge point very discreet and small low profile you can see there's the entry holes in the top and equally i think there's one in the bottom as well but it's under the front cover so we'll again show this out on the wall it's got a nice led light that pops up on the front all touch control just a quick look in the manual because we always run through these to see exactly what we've got in the kit. So we've got the bungs to close those holes up. Sorry, they're there. Uh, the cable entry tunnels, uh, your fixing screws, the tool to remove the front. Explains here about the lights that appear and the touch button, how all that works. It has a little light strip. But there is a rifid area um, for the integrated rifid reader to enable access to the charge point and also that it connects via a built-in eSIM. It does have Wi-Fi on there as well, and it's got EasyLink RF. A few other bits and pieces, the um, standards that it complies to, and it says here it's got built-in RCD protection, and that meets the requirements of BS61008. So it's got that built in. It's also got the pen fault protection built in there as well. So this is another one where you can go straight onto the... Um, MCB approach if you're using a cable type that supports that of course and you can use a 40 amp maximum uh, MCB so it's saying the maximum there and the short circuit rating at the charge point must not exceed 10 k which you would very hope it wouldn't be doing so on most domestic installs obviously on a three phase system got to sometimes make sure that that's not a possibility and then you've got your cable sizes for the maximums and minimums that you can use on the product and yeah just basic installation you know this is quite a detailed instruction manual compared to some of the other ev ones we've seen actually uh, it takes you through opening it up getting it on the wall you can see the cable entry and again the guys are going to show you all this out on site so i won't dwell on it too much and yeah that's um that's sort of it i guess we'll get on with getting this on the wall and leave you in the hands of matthew and nathan while i voice it all over again We'll see how this comes together, how it plays out with the software as well. We'll have a look at the app and stuff. And let's get straight to it. Okay, so we can see the guys have jumped out to site. We've got this old 16th edition plastic consumer unit. Bit of a gas pipe that's running right along the wall there and pretty much in the most awkward place possible. But we'll work around it. We do have to keep a minimum distance away from that. Um, if you are not familiar with the rules on keeping cables and equipment away from gas pipes, go and check them out. You can run your cables closer to the gas pipe than you might realise, but other equipment you need to try and keep a safe distance away. And you can see Matthew's just checking for that here before he marks his fixing holes. Um, he's going to make sure we get this a safe distance away so we're not causing a problem. And you can see in terms of the bonding that the gas pipe is bonded there. Strictly speaking, it's probably not at the appropriate distance from where the cable enters the premises, but because we can see it along its entire run and we know there's no joins in there, there's absolutely no issue with that as far as I'm concerned. And you can see here, Matt is just marking up and making sure he's level with his back plate. You'll have noticed on the video they dropped out last week, the little bit of a giggle we had over him not quite getting that dead square first time. So he's making an extra effort here. To make sure he's on it and he's going for the no glove approach today so he said last week with his single glove it was just because he couldn't find one uh, you can see he's drilling his holes here and we've got the extractor on the front of that drill so it takes a lot of the dust away less sweeping up less potential to cause any aggravation of your own lungs double win for me so I'll just get all that drilled out and then they can get the back plate fixed on uh, you can see Matt is just going to start popping this on the wall now, checking his level. And this is the openings in the back plate, so you can see there's three on the top and that one in the bottom. And they're just going to bung up the holes they don't need and get the, the grommet input that comes in this kit for the cable to slot through 
and into the charge point itself. So you can see Matty just forcing those stuffing glands, sorry, the grommets into the, the openings to make sure they don't have any issues with IP ratings and such. And these are weather rated, so they can be used outside. You can see there they are a tight fit, which is what you want. You don't want these to be allowing any moisture to ingress to the charge point, especially if you have it out in the open. So a little bit of a fiddle there. Um, but yeah, he's just about got it. And then we can move on to getting this wired up. Uh, so I think he's making sure he gets his uh, entry gland in the right hole. I think they're going for the middle hole on this one. And uh, yeah, that's sort of where we're up to on that. Pretty much there with the cable dropping in. You can see the last opening. I think they're just going to try it out and see how much they need to strip now. So yeah, you can see he's popping it in, seeing what sort of length of cable he needs and making a mark so he can strip this cable coming across. And yeah, we've just got the NYY on this one. So we're popping straight into the charge point. There's no CT clamp on it. We've got a 100 amp main service fuse and the load that's been used by the consumer is at a low enough level for us not to be worried about that being an issue on this one. And you can see they've got the little grommet on there nice and tight to the point Matthew looks like he's just cut his hand there. He should really have his gloves on. And you can see we're getting the grommet in and the cables all neatly dressed away into this little charge point now and then they can work back to the consumer unit itself. We did have a spare way in this board, and fortunately a 32 amp breaker. As I mentioned earlier on in this video, it doesn't need RCD protection, so we can go straight off um, the main switch side of the 16th edition board. See Matthew dressing his cables around, and he does make a mistake on this that he spots later on. For those of you who are eagle-eyed, look out for that one. You can see he's... Um, stripping his ends there and he's using his side cutters and not his croppers so I'm going to have to deduct 10 points on this one and again these have a little allen key screw terminal on so just tighten them up enough and then go back with your torque driver at the end to make sure you've got them set to the right levels and you can see here this is his little mistake I think where he's popping in to his main earthing terminal and not onto the PME earth connection that you'll see just to the right side of there um, as it states in the instruction manual. So he does realise this before he actually connects it all up and you'll see him rectifying this little error later on in the video. So just about all connected up there and um, ready to look at getting the cable up to the consumer unit. So he's just spinning that down. So he's, this is his wires all connected up. Again, the CPC is still in the wrong terminal. But we'll ignore that for now. And the cable route up to this consumer unit, you can see we're going to go across and up to that board and then get the wiring dressed in and away so we're, we're nice and neat um, or as neat as we can we couldn't get into the top or the sides of this consumer unit it was all knocked out across the top there was nowhere to get a gland in so really that was the only space for it um, and that's where the charge point was required by the customer so they've made as neat a job as they can with that and you see that's Matthew just connecting that CPC there so it goes into the PME side because this is a TNCS PME and then the front cover just locks down, clips onto it, and that's it. It's, it's in and done. You can see there he's just popped the power onto the charge point, and you'll see it starts to do its thing. has a little fire up, and it needs commissioning and setting up through the app now. Um, and again, this is a pretty easy one to get set up and onto somebody's um, app on the phone so they can control it. This is Matty just putting it through its test sequence, as you'll see, using his TIS MFT and the EV100 adapter. Always test your charge points when you are installing electric vehicle charge points. And that's that's it on the wall. You can see the cable routes there. They've got the linear invisible clips onto the cable dropping down to the charge point. You can see it's just running through its little update. So that's what it means is it's clicking up the bar there. It's gonna update the latest firmware from the internet of things and make sure it's all set up for the customer. And that's important in terms of security. There's often updates to these to make sure that they're not open for access to people who might be trying to get into a, a network of type for someone's actual installation. So yeah, it's a, an important part when you are installing these to ensure that they are on the latest firmware and connected to the internet. And these do come with the capability of both Wi-Fi and um, cellular connections as well, if I didn't mention that earlier on in the video. And that's kind of it on the wall customer's been taken through how the charge point works it's a really simple one it's only going to be used on rare occasions 
this is largely as a backup because the customer charges their vehicle in the workplace um, but it's there for them now as an option and we've done it with as little um, damage to the existing equipment as possible and trying to reduce costs for the client as well by not installing an additional consumer unit or replacing the main current consumer unit. Perfectly safe and sensible way to go about approaching this one and yeah that's the easy EV charge point. Thank you all for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.